irony has always been that horror may be disregarded by critics, but often they are the best made movies you're going to find in terms of craft. You can't scare people if they see the seams. Quote, director James Wan. Welcome to the Pixelbot Movie Podcast for episode 60-something, 70-something now. We've been we've been doing this for a few years now. You realise that? Yeah, it's been a little while. Been a little while. Just just a scotch. Uh, with me this, this episode, I'm joined by the won't go down the stairs into the basement in the dark by himself, Lucas. Only if it's uh, the evil dead lady that's down there, I won't go down. And the always wants to go off and walk around by himself, Ethan. Hey, I'm, an, I'm, I'm self-isolating, okay? What can I say? <laughs> in a horror movie, it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, okay? No, 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 you need to do it. The topic of conversation for this episode is director and producer James Wan. We're going to have a look at uh, his body of work, of which uh, the three of us have seen quite a bit of. Probably not all of, but quite a bit of. Uh, and talk about uh, his work. Uh, we've also got a bit of news, which is great. Uh, it's, it's I suppose, because we're leaving him to three-week gaps. We've, we're sort of gathering up trailers and news where we can find it, other than everything in the known universe is cancelled. So we've got a bit of that. Let's start with that. How about you take us away, Ethan? CBS is reportedly discussing a Star Trek Picard spinoff for Janeway. This would be cool. I'd be fine with this. Yeah, I mean, I was always, I was, I mean, I never got into Star Trek really apart from Voyager. So, yeah, I think Janeway is the co- Janeway has the coolest character arc in terms of the captain, apart from Picard. Um, oh. So yeah, like I think this, I think this could be really cool. I just realised it's red from Orange is the New Black. Really? Yeah, this new thing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew that the whole time. Like, oh no, I don't know. I've never seen like. Yeah, the, I'm, well, I, uh, I watched Voyager. I, I've never seen. I watched Voyager as a kid, so like when she was in Orange is the New Black, and I'm like, oh, it's Janeway. I've but, only yeah. seen uh, Enterprise. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, no, she she had, <laughs> she had a pretty cool character arc in Voyager. So. Um, but Voyager is a good binge. Yeah. It, it is a good sure. binge. I'm not. I've got plenty of things to binge watch. Because you get that whole, that whole, um, was it Ness? Tess. You get the whole Tess arc, and then she, she, like, you know, whatever does, does she, I won't spoil it, does her thing and leaves, and then you get Seven or Nine. Yeah, Seven, seven and Nine's one of the best characters in the whole series, like in the whole of Star Trek. She's, she single-handedly got horny teenage boys interested in Star Trek. Yes. Not that I would know. <laughs> Not no, that right? I would know. No, right? But I mean, you were all hanging out for her scenes. Not that I would know, Toby. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Ryan. Oh, Sonya Blade herself. No, get back to get back to Janeway. Like that would be a really cool show because, again, like it would be interesting to see what happens with her when spoilers she returns to Earth. So, well, she, you she, mean, she, what you mean? She, I mean, she did the end of the the series, if that's what you meant. Hey. Well, she did already at the end of the series. Yeah, but like, I'm assuming she would have been promoted because of like she, basically she pops up once. Yeah, she turns up once in the movies. Uh, she's she's been promoted to whatever it is, general admiral or something. Wait, she was in one of the movies. Yeah, or she's mentioned. I think she's meant she's referenced. Like they oh. say, oh, Ad- Admiral Janeway or General Ad- um, Janeway said this, this, this. Like she's mentioned in one of the the movies that came out after. After uh, after that would have finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not oh, enough I've of a Star Trek it. fan to be able to give you like the specifics. I'm not a, a but it, yeah, she is referenced. So she obviously at the end of the series she returns. She's you know and then uh, yeah she's promoted and, and obviously she's working out of the academy on Earth. But yeah, it would be cool. It'd be yeah, cool for sure. Anyway, uh, next we have Snowpiercer. His premiere date has moved up two weeks on TNT. It now comes out. May seventeenth. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Uh, I'm really, really excited for yeah, this. Jennifer was there a Connelly, s- Debbie Diggs? It's, wasn't there uh, a Snowpiercer two movie? Did that come yeah, out and, yet? Or uh, yeah, yeah, the movies? The movie came out ages ago. Because no, I only saw the, the first one. There was there was going to be a sequel. Um, oh, I think okay. They, they ah. came in favor of doing the TV series. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure IMDb has reference to Snowpiercer two, and I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't see. No, there was a sequel, but maybe yeah, this is what this is, right? Yeah, I think got shit canned in favor of doing a tv show um That's i don't right. know though i don't know if we've talked about it though what the fact that snow Snowpier- snowpiercer is actually just the sequel to uh charlie and the chocolate factory 
<laughs> it is that. You are correct. I can Holy shit, think. that is a deep winding hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down right now. Right? But you need the children because okay. they're the same size as the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> Did we talk have we talked about season two yet? Like, they've already started talking about season two? Yeah, Sean Bean's already cast for season two. Yeah, oh, Sean's wow. going to be in season two already. So, I wonder how long before he dies. Yeah, I'll say he'll die straight away. Yes, yeah. three episodes. I'll give it three episodes. I'm happy to have uh, something to watch with uh, Jennifer Connolly in it, too. Awesome. Yeah, mm. she's underrated. I think she's really underrated in terms of, like, her roles. She does. Uh, she's had a lot of good roles. Last thing I saw um, was, but she's been uh, kind of yeah. overshadowed. So are we getting this on anything local that we know of? I mean, probably Foxtel. Probably Foxtel. Yeah. All right. So, I assume, so, so, so you mean Pirate Bay then? Cool. No. Wasn't it? Wasn't no, it no, going no. to Stan? I don't know. I actually thought it was going to Stan. I thought I saw something oh, that'd about be good. it. I'm not sure. <laughs> cool. Uh, What's next? Next, a bit of sad news: the Flash actor Logan Williams dies suddenly at 16. This yeah. Playing the young Barry Allen throughout the series. Yeah, that was a bit early, because I don't think, believe, yeah. unlike a lot of deaths happening at the moment, I'm pretty sure this wasn't corona-related. No, I don't think it was. Because they didn't really say what killed him. Yeah. Which usually means it's either drugs or suicide, and they don't want to, you know, make the person look bad post-mortem. But, uh, yeah, way too early to be leaving uh, leaving the, the world. Yeah. All right, next, Hellraiser reboot sets writing, directing team. Yep, don't fuck um, it up. I've never seen any of them. I don't know. It's worth, I mean, you won't watch it if I tell you to, but the first no, one alone is worth watching it because it's uh, Clive Barker. Well, <coughs> who, I do love who... the game Clive Barker Jericho. <laughs> that's, that's really great. I really like that. It's a terrible game. It's, <coughs> what? It's that's terrible fucking game. great. Yeah, right. Okay, Skyline. But anyway, the point is Clive Barker is one of, you know, up there with, you know, um, George Romero and Wes Craven. He he's one of the, the the you know the grandfathers of horror. And the first Hellraiser, at very least, is definitely worth worth a watch. Put it on the one day list. Uh, next we have Salem's Lot movie recruits Annabelle comes home director. Obviously, it's not he's not a James Wan, and so I mean it's gonna for me. I'm worried this film, film Salem's Lot, is just gonna slide into mediocrity. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Like... It'll be better than Skyline. Uh, we're also getting a Robin Hood. It's getting a live-action CGI remake at Disney Plus of the 1973 animated uh, Robin Hood movie. You know they're going to do bed knobs and broomsticks it's soon. Fuck's that? Bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah, We've had it. this conversation before. Jesus Christ, you're twelve. Dis- disgusting. But they're going to do it. You know that they're going to. They're going to. They're going to do it. They'll redo it. It's fucked. I don't know what the fuck this movie is. Get the fuck out it's, of here. It's a really <laughs> awesome Disney movie. Like, you know how Mary Poppins was, like, live action and animation? I never seen Mary Poppins, so I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, not, it's literally like talking. having your own stop four-year-old. Talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not kidding either. I've never seen it. Uh, the half of it. Yeah, official so trailer, good. Netflix. Yeah, uh, this is going to... I'm calling it now. This is going to get really good reviews. If you, I don't know if you've watched this trailer. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Lucas, did you catch this? Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't even know what this one is. All right, so she's uh, of Asian descent, living in the you know middle of America somewhere in a country town where nobody's Asian. So she gets picked on, blah 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 blah. So she does other people's homework for money, and then one boy pays her instead to do homework to write love letters for a girl he's got a crush on, and it and then sort of leads into this interesting love triangle, uh, and. It's not normally the kind of thing I would watch because it's teeny and it's like, but it's it just looks really well acted and really well directed and the script seems kind of tight and I think I think this is going to do big things on Netflix. You generally find that, that a lot of the um, this shows that are kind of aimed at teeny, like the teeny dramedies at Netflix have been doing like they're not my cup of tea, but you, you know stuff like Thirteen Reasons Why. Um, that yeah. new dare, I think was it was a dare. But see, Thirteen Reasons Why was very um, popular for a lot of the wrong reasons. I, this just looks like a really well, feel good. Pop- upbeat. It was also popular because of the book. But what, sure. what I mean in the sense of like it was kind of aimed more at like the late teens, early twenties kind of crowd. And this kind of sounds like it also is the same. But yeah, but I like think it's just a more positive Netflix, message. Yeah, a lot more of those Netflix dramas though tend to get a lot of good coverage. I'll have to check the trailer out. Again, it's not normally my thing, but like... Yeah, it's definitely worth checking the trailer out. I think you might get a a buzz out of it. 
Yeah, it sounds like a really cool concept in theory of like, yeah, it's like obviously she's writing love letters for someone else. Yeah, like and then she sort of starts to realize that she might actually have a crush on on the girl instead, and then then sort of he's like, oh, she has a crush on the girl. Oh yeah, everyone starts swinging all different directions. It it, it comes. It, as I said it just it just think it's gonna get all kinds of yeah, but it doesn't do it in a way that comes across as forced. If you know what I mean. Right. It's more of a. I, I I think even it's a case of she falls in love with the idea of falling in love. I'm not sure, but it's definitely a trailer worth watching. And I think uh, I would certainly. I don't know if I'd go out of my way to watch it by myself, but if my daughter was going to watch it, for instance, I would probably sit down and watch it with her. Yeah. I also just noticed it's a movie, not a series. I just assume any oh, thing Netflix puts out is a yeah, series. Yeah, it's a series, right? Oh, okay. Well, that makes it that makes <laughs> it actually more digestible for people like me then, because then I would yeah. sit and watch a movie. I was going to say, this is kind of funny, though, because I could totally imagine this as, like, an eight-episode series, because the, the concept totally leans into right? long-form storytelling. You slow burn that over time, but hell, you know, it looks like it's only about 105 minutes, so... Oh, well. um, Yeah, nice and easy to, to, you know, under two hours, nice and easy to take in. Next, we have a trailer for Afterlife Season 2. Yep. I need to watch this show. I, I saw Haven't the you watched the first one? No, I haven't even watched it oh. yet, so. Gonna, I think I'll wait for season two to come out. I'll do what I did with Alter Carbon. <laughs> I'll just wait for season two to come out, and I'll just binge it. Dude, again, and then I'll you will, really you and will have to wait two years for new season. So much, you will wet yourself. It's so yeah, dude, funny. I'm a big Ricky Gervais fan. Like, but then it's I also just, got it's. A, well, but I'm not, which is what's surprising. I don't like him, and yet I, this was really good. And, but as you go from there's there's moments where you will laugh your ass off and then you'll be nearly crying like he yeah. really it, it's an emotional roller coaster I, i'm just the only thing is i'm not quite sure how they're going to do a season two because season one kind of wraps things up neatly so i i i wonder if this has sort of come about because season one did so well they're kind of like well we we, we want to make some more money like, yeah shoehorn in a second season yeah which would be sad We'll I mean, as long, we'll as, they, as long as they do it right. Like, I mean, the first season looked great when I watched the trailer for it. Um, I just became very time poor <laughs> to be able to sit down and be like, right, cool, I'm going to sit down and watch eight episodes of a TV show. But yeah, like, I mean, Ricky Gervais already has a diehard fan base of people that will watch his stuff no matter what. Yeah. Popularity stuff like extras and um, uh, show the Carl Pilkington one that he did. And, you know, The Office. Like, he, he's got a dedicated fan base that loves him, so... Um, there are people no matter what that are going to watch this show um, but yeah I'm totally going to wait until I think the second season comes out and just binge the whole thing now that I have plenty of time on my hands yeah uh, next we have a trailer for Extraction which is already out on Netflix starring yeah, Chris go Hemsworth. watch it now Russo Brothers Chris Hemsworth yeah. do it looks good yeah. Go. yeah this looks very cool keep in mind this isn't Russo directed it's Russo produced correct yeah. oh hang on April 24th oh it must um, be this Friday it's this Friday well, I thought uh, I saw it on my Netflix. Me. Oh, it might have been a, just a trailer. I swear I saw the thing for it on my Netflix when I was looking. Uh, like when no, I was it's not a movie like, called, uh, with Bruce Willis called Extraction. You might have seen that. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this Friday. Yeah. Russo Brothers. Chris Hemsworth. Trailer looks really good. Lots of action. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely one to watch. Uh, next to the trailer is Perry Mason coming to HBO. Whatever this is. This is really cool. Did you hear that, Lucas? He just... I, I'm, I'm, I would yeah, get... I'm ignoring him. Like, Jesse just jumped... Exist. Jesse would jump out of the fucking shadows here with a bowie knife and just start stabbing him at this point. Like... Oh, I honestly don't know what the fuck Perry Mason is. Why can't we just get Jesse on the podcast and just fuck Ethan off? Because <laughs> Jess, Jesse's never available. He's not reliable. Are you doing it if you want? It's also oh, fucking Mondays. <laughs> Ethan's, Ethan's reliable. No, no, Perry, Perry Mason is like a classic like TV series. Basically, HBO are just rebooting it. Yeah, he started uh, have, like have as a... black and white. I mean, it was it's been around since whatever it was the sixties. Well, how did he get into color then? <clears throat> it's 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 so old that Toby was watching it in the second grade. You know what I liked about this trailer though is I mean I've, I've watched some of the original Mason and you just stop talking. I'll mute you. Okay and. <laughs> It's good, but this really seems to have dialed the noir up to 11, if you noticed, if you've seen this trailer. Yeah. I, I haven't yet, but, like, give me all of it. I'm, yeah. I'm a sucker for it, so. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lean, lean into it, man. Like, people right now are looking for genre-based stuff. More rats too, huh? More rats too. 
Oh my god, I'm yeah, so Bruce, nice. Bruce Campbell and Michael Rooker. Yep, but no Stan Lee, R.I.P. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I've never yeah. seen more rats, but yeah, okay. So, oh my god. Have you seen anything? Have you literally seen anything? Why does it still come as a surprise to you, Toby? What do you... What do you... <sighs> I watch Skyline every day, every week. <laughs> I'm not even sure if he's lying any not. I'm not even he's, sure if he's lying any. He's not. I went over to his house one day and like he had Skyline 1, 2, and 3 on three separate monitors in his bedroom. I was sick <laughs> and I like, sent Lucas a, a message and I'm like, ah, time to watch my comfort movie while I'm sick in Skyline. And yeah, he did. Like, fuck sakes. <laughs> I was like, stop texting me. Do not speak to me <laughs> my son ever again. Yes. Um, anyway, yeah, so yeah. Bruce Campbell, Michael Rooker, yeah. That'd be good, that'd be good. Uh, I, I think they'll what? probably still have a, a... Kevin Smith will probably sneak a, a Stan Lee post or something in if he's allowed to, I would think. Oh, 100% he'll be able to, because I know um, we we watched Jane Silent Bob reboot, I think it was like last week, week before maybe, and they got a Stan Lee tribute in the movie. Right. Um, they actually got two. They got two, so there's one at the beginning and there's one at the end. So I, I feel like because Kevin Smith had such a close relationship with Stan Lee, I'm sure there's a way they'll be able to incorporate him somehow. It's a sm it's a small spoiler for reboot, but basically Brody has opened a comic book store in the shopping center that More Rats takes place in, and that's where the Stan Lee tribute is. There's like a big shrine to Stan Lee. Next thing you know, we'll get chasing Amy too, chasing Amy further. <laughs> chasing her Amy. Chasing her Amy. Ch chasing Amy the chasiest. All right. Ch chase All right. Finally. We have a Capone trailer. Oh, this yeah. looks good. Oh, uh, I'm getting a little hearty great. fatigued, though. I am getting a little hearty nah. fatigued. Give me yeah. more. Give me more of that sweet, sweet hard E. Mm. Mm. All for it. Mm. I'm, I, what I'm really... So, what I'm a really big fan of is... For for a couple of moments in that trailer, I forgot it was Tom Hardy I was looking at. Like that's how deep into that character he gets. Nah, I didn't. It was Tom Hardy the whole way. Mm, I don't know. That's just me. Like I can totally like I just got lost in that. But yeah, he even sounds like Al Capone, which is creepy too. The only Al Capone but for I me will is say, I, I will say that I'm a big, big, big Matt Dillon fan, and I'm so glad to see him back on a big screen, like in a big screen role. Mm. Well, great, next, great act, great actor who's underutilized. I think. Next, we have JJ Abrams is developing a Justice League Dark and the Shining spin-off shows for HBO Max. Oh, this is gonna be cool. Well, Something the Shining spin-off show sounds interesting. And so does. I really wish they'd hurry the fuck up and release a bloody Talisman movie or TV show, though. I've only been waiting, you know, thirty years. There already is one, isn't there? No. No, and I don't know why, because it's 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 actually really. I mean, if you, oh, yeah. I think a dream catcher, Talisman it is, is is up there with, if not better in some regards, than the Dark Tower books, uh, and I don't know why they've never done it. There must be a reason, but oh, okay, no, sure. no, 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 they've already hired a director for Talisman. Yeah, it's been, but it's been, it's like limbo fied. It's been faffing around for a while, and no, no, it's not really going anywhere. So. Mm. When I get a trailer, then I'll then I'll then I'll get ready. You know what I mean. Anyway, um, next we have Artemis Fowl has moved to Disney Plus exclusive rather than a cinema mm. release. And we we suspected this was a possibility just because initial reactions to the film were pretty poor. I think. Yeah, yeah they're they not were. Good. June twelfth, it comes out on Disney Plus. Yeah. Well, I mean that's good if you've already got a Disney Plus sub, but. Yeah. Yeah. In semi related um, news as well, they also announced that Dark Phoenix is going to be coming out this Friday as well, or Saturday. Uh, onto, oh, on Disney onto Plus? The platform. Yeah, onto yeah. the platform. God, that thing uh, was shit. The best part of that was the, tr was the train scene. It's the best part of the whole movie. I still have to watch it. I haven't had. I just haven't you, wanted you to. You are you not missing out. Swing and a miss if you want. Yeah, you are not missing uh, out. I feel anything. like I have to watch it because I've watched every other movie. And I mean, uh, let's, I face like facts, it right. let's face facts. It can't be worse than Wolverine Origins. Oh, it can. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's it definitely can. on par. I would put it on par. Really? Because yeah. that not good. was it's not terrible. Good. It's terrible. It was another one of those films that I nearly turned off. Like it was so bad. I I walked out of Origins Wolverine. If it's on par with that, in I'm my opinion, it was on par with that. 
Uh, next, we have uh, a Miss TV show is in the works from the writer of Thor and X-Men First Class. This is interesting. Based off the hat video game. Yeah, there was also two or three novels, uh, of which I've read the first one a couple of times, actually. It's really well written, and uh, it was a really interesting read. Because when you play the game, you can sort of pick up on bits of the story, but the, the, the novel, the first novel they wrote, really filled in a lot of the gaps and explained... Uh, a lot of what the hell was going on. Trouble is, for people like Ethan and possibly even Lucas, this game came out in 1995, I think, originally. Hey, I was alive then. I was PC gaming, like, young. Yeah, but I mean, you I weren't playing Mist. Mist. I mean, yeah. I never played Mist, but yeah, like, I, I, yeah. I know the game. Like, I've, I've seen it at, like, EB Games and. The, you don't and need to play the game, Steam though. Stuff. It's, it's sort of like. It's sort of like, um. It's sort of like you could watch someone play Dungeons and Dragons and go, that's really cool. Uh, but I don't need to play it to appreciate the story or the concept. Yeah. And this is what you get with Mist. Like, you don't need... Don't think, oh, shit, I'm going to race off and play the game before I'm going to watch this TV show. You don't need to. What's what's exciting about Mist is the ideas. And the idea is quite simple. It's that there are certain people that are able to create world, worlds through writing in books. And those, those books become gateways. Uh, and uh, there's all of the pros and cons and I guess it goes so you got some people who are doing the wrong thing and they create worlds with people in them and then they enslave those people and subjugate them because they're a god and then you've got other people trying to do the right thing yada 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 it's quite interesting and I can see this I don't know whether they're going to do an original story or whether they're going to base it on the game and the movie sort of more because the, the the game happens after the first book because the end of the first book he throws the mist book into the cosmos and in the mist game a book falls out of the sky and lands at your feet and then you get sucked into mist. So, I want to spoil it. Uh, well, you're not going to play it, so it doesn't matter. And you're not going to read the book, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah, no, point no. is, TLDR. I think this could be really good. I'm really interested to see what they do with the IP because it's the the premise is interesting. And for our last bit of news, Sam Raimi has confirmed he's directing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is a good thing. Very good thing. You know what this means? Toby Maguire. It's pizza time. Bruce Campbell cameo. Oh yeah, I like Great. the news that you skipped over because you don't give a shit. No, I was going to leave that for you if you brought it up. If you weren't going to bring it up, I was just going to skip it over. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, well, we got our first look at um, Denis Villeneuve. We're not done with Doctor Strange yet. No one cares. Nah. No, we no, are. It's okay. going to be cool. Um, obviously, like everyone knows, that Sam Raimi's really good at horror. So, um, if they're going to lean into like a like a hardcore horror movie, um, he's probably one of the best guys to do it. I still would like to have seen Scott Derrickson's take on it. But he's going to be an EP. I think Disney were were I think behind the scenes Disney had a very clear idea of what they wanted, and was shopping around for a director that was going to give them what they wanted, what they saw, and the, you know what I mean. Yeah, and I as think. well, based on based on reports that I've seen on Twitter from uh, Roger Waddell, um, apparently a few characters are going to be introduced in that film. Um, and I feel like Scott may not have wanted to put them in there. And that's why there was a conflict. Uh, and that's why I wonder how much shuffling are we going to get to now with the, the sort of a, nearly a six month delay. If they're going to, you know, move cameos around or whatever have you just to kind of fix up timelines. I don't know. I'm not sure. I know it's like, obviously all the movies have been pushed back six months, um, in terms of release dates and all like pushed back to the next date. So like Black Widow's out in November and Eternals is out in February and da da da. But um, I know the, um, what's his name? The guy who's directing Shang-Chi. Um, Daniel Dustin Critton. Yeah, he put yeah. up a cast he, photo on Twitter. Yeah, he put it, yeah, it was on Instagram. Yeah, that's where I saw yeah. it. Basically being like, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't really do much. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle everything moving forward. I would say Marvel's big enough juggernaut that it's just going to be business as usual when everything opens up again. Yeah, um, I don't. I feel like they're one of the few companies in the world that's probably not going to get impacted purely because of how much money they have. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, last bit is June. Uh, so we had some some shots of Timothy Chalamet, uh, Zendaya, and others in costume, um, as well as uh, uh, Thanos. What's his name? Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin and um, Woohoo. Uh, what's his face? Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Thank you. I'm, just, my, my, I'm getting old, man. My brain's just not working anymore. Yeah, Momoa Brolin. Uh, 
Yeah, what I mean, you've you've not seen the original film nor read the book. What did you think? Like, I, I'm interested in hearing your opinion, Ethan, as someone who has you know no interest in any of this stuff. What what, what when you saw the pictures? Looks like some people who are out having <laughs> fun at um, Burning Man got their fucking motorbike outfits on and they're just having a good time. <laughs> There's some great cosplay in there. I don't know. Was I, 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 there's only one thing I'm interested in seeing with this movie, and that is the giant sandworms. Right. Okay. That's all I want to see. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. That's literally all I want to fucking see with it. It's yeah, just fair enough. Fucking yeah. giant sandworms. Yeah. Uh, my, my dad's like a big fan. He's read the book. He fucking loves it. I think we used to have the the game, or he had the game, fucking years ago. Anyways, play that, and yeah. that's all I know about. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how Conan's next. Because we've seen all the Atreides, it'd be interesting to see how Conan's next. Yeah, not too bad. It was interesting. Uh, not, yeah. I, I have to wait and see. I have to wait for the full movie. Just to, just to add in as well, I've actually got a last piece of news. Um, I just kind of added it to a little little chat before, but um, Neil Gaiman's confirmed that um, Sandman has been postponed due to everything that's going on. Um, he also confirmed as well that the scripts have been completely written, the casting had been started, directors had been hired, and sets were in the process of being built. Um, so basically what's going to happen is once everything's kind of back to normal, they're going straight into production. Um, why he said, well, the quote is, as soon as the world is ready to make a TV drama, Sandman will move smoothly back into being made. In the meantime, we're taking the opportunity to get these scripts as good as we can. Cool. All right. So right. this is the, the story for Netflix. They've also confirmed as well it's going to be 11 episodes. That works Which for me. is a really odd number for Netflix. I don't like seeing Jason Momoa without a beard. Uh, yeah, there are photos, like, when he's between movies. Oh, no, I will um, shot from in, the, in uh, June. He doesn't have a beard. He looks yeah, funny because up, Duncan like Idaho is meant to only be about 18 or 19, I think. He's young. Fucking looks like he did back in Baywatch. They go, that fucking all right. Yeah. Paul is meant to be 15 or 16, and then, uh, I mean, he's not 18, but he's early 20s or something. He's meant to be quite young, and he's he's uh, Paul's friend. Sorry. Yeah. The very first photo you saw when you posted it had me a bit worried, too, because the Atreides all dress in military uniform, like they're military people, and he didn't look to be in his military outfit, which looked odd, So, but then the later shots showed everybody in uniform, so that, that was all right. I'm like, okay, phew. <laughs> Because their entire system is 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 like military based. Anyway, 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 that's the news. Okay, so uh, three weeks. What have we been watching in the last three weeks? What have you been watching in the last three weeks, Lucas? Stuff. Um. Oh man, where to start? So I'm just trying to think. Finally watched Murder, Murder on the Orient Express. That was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now you gotta wait for the sequel. Um, yes, which I'm really excited for. Um, took the girl thread through. Funnily enough, now that we're talking about James Wan. Um, took her through the first two Conjuring movies. She'd never seen them before. Mm-hmm. Um, so we watched those. Watched Invisible Man. That was great. Um, watched one I've been wanting to see for a long time uh, called Anna and the Apocalypse, which is like a British Christmas musical movie that is based entirely around a zombie apocalypse. It, one of the funniest things I've seen this year. It was great. Apart from that, though, uh, my time's pretty much been taken up with the Final Fantasy VII Remake video, ga- video game, so... Right, um, yeah. If I haven't been watching stuff, I've been playing that. What about you, Ethan? What have you been watching in the last few weeks? Uh, I watched The Platform, the new movie on Netflix. Oh, I've heard about that. Apparently it's, 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 it's a sp- Spanish language one, but there's an English dub for it, which is actually pretty good. I watched the English dub. Okay. Um, I watched Stolar Tiger King. Oh, yeah, I watched Tiger King too. Holy shit. I watched... The Mummy and the Mummy Returns on Thursday. Um, <laughs> it's, it's his feel good feel good films. <laughs> That's my feel good films. I hate I hate the shift of work I was on, so to cheer me up. I watched The Mummy, Mummy Returns. Uh, I watched a reality show called Too Hot to Handle that Netflix put out. I watched all of that on the weekend. Uh, other than that. I gave up on Heroes because I got the season three and that's when it gets shit, so I didn't want to carry on watching it. You got so shit at the end of season one. It started pissing me off. And then I've just been watching some anime, and that's about it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'll quickly add another movie in too that I watched I forgot about. Um, it's called The Report. It's on Amazon uh, with Adam Driver. It's about the guy that leaks the yes, torture yep. report yep. from the CIA. I watched it. Yep, I've watched it. Yeah. Fuck, it was fun. that was fantastic. Yeah, I watched it when it when it came out. It was it was yeah, 
like day one it was super super keen on that yeah it was very well done very well done yeah well because i've been because i've been so time poor um i'm starting the backlog now, we have all this time for, <laughs> yeah we've got all this time free so like i'm playing video games again and i'm watching movies and i'm like i don't i'm like where did all this time come from like <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm, I'm finally being able to catch up i've been watching some tv shows too like i'm kind of catching up with tv and because i've fallen so far behind with some stuff so uh, but no, the report was fantastic. Definitely one that I recommend everyone watch if they're into um, like real life drama. Mm, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, it's basically he's he's calling out the CIA and America and all the rest of it on you know what they were doing over in the Middle East. Uh, yeah. If you CIA, like, yeah, um, he's calling out the CIA. It's, 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 he's an internal investigations officer into the CIA and and what they were doing in terms of uh, torture over in the Middle East and yeah, the shit so he, he discovers. He's basically working as a investigator for the U.S. Senate. Yeah, it's pretty fucking. And considering it's all based on a true story, like it's pretty fucking disgusting what was going on over there. Oh man! So when they were cutting to like, so there were actually there are scenes in that that are pretty graphic that like show you the torture that they were doing. And yeah. man, like I had to look. At, I'm a horror movie aficionado, and like I couldn't handle that stuff knowing that it really happened. Like yeah. that's that's kind of where I draw the line on shit. And yeah. there there's a particular scene. Um, about halfway that I I had to turn away from. It was that bad. Yeah. Um, but Adam Driver, I'm not a big, I'm not crazy big on Adam Driver, but he was fantastic in this. I, I really like him really in anything him. that isn't Star Wars. I oh, see. That's the other thing. I really <laughs> like him in Star Wars, but I haven't really seen anything outside of Star Wars that I have liked him in except for this. Right. Oh, actually, um, I'll t- I take that back. Black Klansman. He was really good in that. Yeah. Yep. I haven't watched that thing he did. The zombie thing he did. What was that? With like, uh, uh, the d- dead don't die. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. Uh, it's no. Uh, what I have been watching is I, I went so back through that movie and, I, and did, did the uh, like I did the Conjuring thing like you. I did Conjuring one, then I did Annabelle, the Conjuring two, Annabelle Creation, the Nun. Got halfway through the Curse of La Lona, turned that off. Got halfway through Annabelle Comes Home, turned that off. Actually, Annabelle Comes Home now. I think of it, it reminds me. It feels a lot like the original Halloween movie because of the babysitters and everything. But yeah, uh, Conjuring one and two really good, and the rest you could you could leave behind, really. Yeah, I'm really Actually, excited for Conjuring three. Yeah, which is not going to be a spooky house though. No, it's a court case, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's for the, the first, first time. First time someone claimed demonic possession in court. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Conjuring one and two are written by James one, which is sort of what led into this week's. Well, this episode's topic of conversation. I also uh, I also started watching uh, season one of the goodies because uh, Tim Brooke Taylor passed away. So, the goodies, goody goody, come come. No, no, it was holy shit, holy shit. How can you not know what the goodies is? Because I'm twelve. Did you yeah, really expect good. anything less? No, I shouldn't have. But anyway, so I started watching the goodies again just because, as I said, Tim Brooke Taylor's dead. And I'm surprised. I, actually, I thought Graham was gone too, but he's not. Graham and Bill were still around. So they're all around. He's the first to go. But, uh. I thought yeah. Graham. I actually thought Graham died. I did too. I did too. And then, because uh, cause when, when I heard the Tim passed, I was like, oh shit. Oh, well, only Bill's left. Uh, and then I looked it up and I'm like, no, 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 no. There, the, the, Tim was the first to go. So there you go. Anyway. Uh, apart from that, I've been streaming a lot, so I haven't had a chance like you. Like I've been doing too much other shit to actually watch movies and and TV shows. But anyway, I'm going to make time for that extraction on Friday. All right, so uh, let's move on to our topic of conversation for this fortnight, and that is James Wan. Uh, he was born on the 26th of February 1977, so he's he's just a little bit older than me. There you go, because I was born in October 77. In Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia, and is of Chinese descent, Wan and his family moved to Perth, Western Australia when he was seven. He attended Lake Togarunong College in Canberra before returning to Perth as an adult. Wan relocated from Perth to Melbourne, where he attended RMIT University. He graduated from RMIT and with a Bachelor of Arts in Media in 1998. And debuted with a film that I know all three of us enjoyed, and that was the original Saw. Yes. Love it. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Also, so that was uh, with his friend and screenwriter Lee Wan Al. Yeah. Yes, that was a duo, and uh, really took the world by storm because I think it was like a million dollar budget. At one point like two, one point two million. Yeah, very tiny budget, and it made huge money. It was one hundred and three million. What's kind yeah. of funny, right, is that movie cost them over a million dollars to make, and ninety percent of it takes place in a dirty, grimy bathroom. 
Yeah. The thing it's is, like, insane. And, and even that, the set that it was filmed in, like, for that bathroom, they still used. They had it in an episode of Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think straight out of the gate, and we'll sort of move through his other, his career, but one thing that I think really defines James Wan in terms of his writing and directing is when it comes to horror, he absolutely knows how to get the pacing spot on. I think this is what separates him from other horror directors. I mean, one, he's able to avoid a lot of uh, jump scares and a lot of cliches and a lot of tropes, but the man is able to keep you on the absolute edge of your seat for long periods of time without tipping you off the edge, if you know what I mean. Yeah, a big, yeah. <clears throat> a big case to, to kind of back that up is Insidious yes um through so through that whole movie right at the first half of all the first third of it i was like yeah this is all right like it's kind of cool and then um i'm not gonna spoil oh, i'll just say it because it's been the movie's been out like 10 years but um they started to get into the idea of astral projection which i'm not a very big believer in like any crazy like you know afterlife that type of thing i, yeah. I, I need i kind of need evidence for it but the, the concept of astral projection has always fascinated me um just because it's it's such a weird thing to be out of your body like that and to just to be able to travel the world uh, or like do you know just go around as if nothing has go nothing has happened um, but they start to kind of delve into the idea of astral projection and and demons and I was like holy shit and like that's when I started getting closer to the edge of my seat and then for the rest of the movie I was entranced he knows how to kind of set the pieces up so he can push them over later if you know what I mean yes yes no he he's he's managed he would he's a, he would actually make a, i reckon you make a fantastic dungeon master or games master for role playing like he's just oh he's, for sure he's just able to keep the pace spot on like he, he he slowly dials the tension up uh and he's a big believer in to a degree of you know not showing you everything you know he he he, he just you know if, conjuring comes to mind the first one where it's a case of you know there's something behind the door and it, it sort of the camera focuses on that black that pitch black but it doesn't show you but the girl the little girl's telling you there's something there and you can kind of feel there's something there but you can't see anything and it, he's also i think able to really especially in those films really get inside that mindset of what it was like as a child when something was hiding in your room and he's able to do it so well yeah conjuring two with the crooked man as well that's another big one oh, mm. the, the part they got like, me the most oh, sorry no, I was going to say, chances are we're probably going to harp on Conjuring quite a bit because those movies are so fantastic. But, um, you know, they, they kind of tease the idea of the Crooked Man existing and, and being a real thing. And then when it happens, like, you're like... You're, I, I remember watching it for the first time. I didn't expect it. I didn't think that they'd pay it off. I just thought, you know... Because at that point, I think they kind of teased Annabelle and they were teasing the nun. And I'm like, all right, cool, the nun's the next big thing. Uh, but then they paid off the crooked man in that movie and uh, yeah it, it very much yeah he's very good at setting things up like that yeah so the, the, part, the part that got me the most of the first uh conjuring was when the sheet blows and the wind wraps yes tears. yes so that, that part literally freaked me the fuck out yeah did you did you uh, just out of curiosity i haven't seen it i don't know if it's available on youtube or not has anybody seen the the original uh, short version of Saw that he did sort of as a? Yes. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, you have. Seen, is yes. it on YouTube or is it commercially available? Yeah, or? I, honestly, it could be. Um, I actually saw it on the Saw uh, DVD. Okay. It's a special feature. Right. Okay. Definitely worth watching. Um, just so you can see how James's mind works before he's able to get money. Um, right. Like I think I think it was shot on like forty grand. Like it's not, it's it's very like a very small budget because it was just a short. Yeah. Um, but the the short is actually based on the bear trap from the first movie. Right. So when you see, um, I can't think of her name, but the girl who was in Becca, um, when you see her in the bear trap in the first movie, it's actually an homage back to the short. Um, right. They, re gotcha. they reshot it with a new character. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Um, the short is definitely worth seeking out. I know it's on the Blu-ray or the, the it was on the DVD when I had the DVD. Right. Um, I'd assume it'd be on the Blu-ray, but I'm sure you could source it out on YouTube or online somewhere. Yeah. So great success with uh, the saw and 
before we move into the next phase of his career, something that's also really smart about it, James is he will, uh, you know, he probably got this off of Lucas and other, Lucas, like James, George Lucas and others, where he's he can take an original IP like Conjuring or Saw and he'll make a film and it'll do well. And then he goes, he's happy to step back and let others play, but he attaches himself as a producer and the money he must have made from the Saw series for what was arguably very little work after the original uh, is a smart business move. Yeah, for sure. And it's I the mean, same with well, the Conjuring yeah. universe as well. Like he's done one or two, one and two, and then just steps back and he's happy to let others play in that that sandbox. But you know, you pay the pay the the admission price to get in. Yeah, very clever. Yeah, I, again, he did the same thing with uh, Insidious too. So yeah, he did the first two Insidious ones, and then he actually handed the third one off to Lee. Yep, he gets um, out when it's still hot and 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 it's fresh, and then before it yep. goes stale, he lets someone else sort of you know. But he he takes his part part of, you know cut in the process. Yeah, I think I think that purely comes from the fact that he's such a creative dude that well, it, it, it's two things. He's got he's got a lot of creativity that he can't sit on one thing for too long because he has to make the next thing. Um, whereas as well, he's now ever since he did Saw and then he did The Conjuring, and then he did Insidious. Um, he's become a very popular man, uh, obviously with what we're about to go into with the next phase of his career. Yeah, um, well, see, so he you know, did he, the Saw. He's, he's become very sought after now in terms of anyone that wants to do anything related to horror or scary things, um, he's involved somehow. And then he took his career took a serious dip, uh, sort of coming off the hype of Saw, uh, his agent uh, encouraged him to sort of jump into the next thing, and he produced and directed. Uh, we well, directed, wrote and directed uh, a couple of films: *Dead Silence* and *Death Sentence*. Both fairly poorly received. Although *Death Sentence* is a very different film, uh, it's sort of a, a, a pseudo sequel to *Death Wish*, Charles Bronson film. Uh, whereas *Dead Silence* was uh, a horror film and. Uh, it's the spooky doll kind of thing, but uh, it just didn't really work. Um, and it was a definite wobble in his uh, career. Uh, I know I've seen I've seen Dead Silence. I never watched Death Sentence. Dead Silence was very much the precursor to Annabelle, I think. Yeah. Um, like, uh, Dead Silence is, is a poor man's Annabelle, really. Mm. Um, very different in terms of what Annabelle is versus what Dead Silence... So like, what is in Dead Silence, but I mean the sense of like, hey, it's a spooky doll, it does weird shit. Um, there's obviously like a massive difference in terms of the third acts, but yeah, yeah. I think I, I, this kind of comes. He only wrote the story though; he didn't actually write the script. Like he gave them the idea, and then someone else wrote it, I believe. For what, Dead Silence? Yeah. He did story. Lee Wan now did screenplay. Oh, Lee oh, did the oh, 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 sorry, sorry, so. James and Lee did the story. Lee did the screenplay. Oh, maybe. That's well, he, di he directed it. He directed it. Yeah, he directed it. But I, I yeah. thought that yeah, like he 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 had the idea, but I didn't know who wrote it. I didn't realize it was Lee. Yeah, yeah Lee's written like most of his work, to be honest. Yeah, I imagine he must. I'd be interested. I didn't like. I was going to look this up before we started the podcast too. I, I'm curious to see if he he has a recurring editor as well because. You know, pacing and, and all that is such a critical thing in these stories, and and so editing is so critic is, is even more important. I just wonder if he's either heavily involved in the process himself, or if he relies on uh, a regular editor to to look after his work. Um, because you'd have to give credit to things like Insidious and, and Conjuring, the editing as well. Because I mean, if you if you if you had poor editing, then you would lose that tension. I know he, he has a couple of. Uh different editors but there's one that sticks through quite a few of them mm, yeah and that wouldn't surprise me i was gonna say as well it kind of like doesn't surprise me that a lot of the like editing things would stay the same because i know a lot of directors tend to be involved in the editing um like they kind of have an eye for certain things that they want to put in to the films so they'll work with the editors to to help put the film together the editors just kind of gloss you know make make gloss it up and make it a bit prettier <laughs> oh i i I wouldn't want to take anything yeah, away from editors. There's a lot. Of... Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, what I mean is, like, he's very involved, and then basically he's like, "We want it to look like this," and then they go. Is and he though? That's it. I don't know. I don't know what he's like. Yeah, oh, I'm oh. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's actively involved the whole way through, from pre to post. Because I'm sure there's some directors that are very hands off. 
yeah. when it comes to editing, you know? I, I, well, like as well, look, look, kind of look at the movies that he has done where he's directed, like he's kind of got big gaps. And I, from memory, it was because he is very involved. He, he kind of wants things to look like different and have his aesthetic. Possibly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But after that, after those two, he then moves, he, has, he's, he comes back to form with Insidious in 2010, which my daughter will watch Conjuring 1 and 2. She won't ever watch Insidious ever again. Man, Insidious is so good. It is so good. Oh, it's... I love that movie. I, I love the, I, even, I liked all of them. I even liked the last, and it's a very different film. Absolutely. But I thought, I, I liked them all. I thought they were all great. Yeah, and then 2013 Conjuring, and then also in 2013 Insidious Chapter 2, which tied in very cleverly to the first one. I, I liked how in the first film you sort of have those blanks and you have those mysterious things going on and then it's kind of explained what they are in the second one. I thought that was very clever. I hadn't really yeah. seen a film do that quite like that before. This is as well, I think, where his career started to blow. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, this, these are the golden years. These are absolutely the golden years of James Wan's career. I mean, uh, Conjuring and Insidious, uh, those two alone really you know, shot him way, way, you know, up in popularity and, and whatever have you. Uh, he then started moving into, away from horror a little bit, uh, into some, some big, big action pieces. And that was with, uh, he had Furious 7 in 2015 and then Aquaman in 2018. Yeah. I think his Fast and Furious movie is probably one of the better looking ones visually. Like it's, it's a really cool movie. Also considering what happened during the production of it as well. Yeah, for sure. Like they had to kind of pivot with um, yeah, Paul Walker's Walker death and stuff. So, but no, I th I thought it was I thought it was really it, it, it visually it looks amazing. Some really cool, really really coolly directed scenes. Yeah, I mean outside of his directing too, he's been involved in a number of other things. Uh, he's also uh, was doing uh, the Malignant Man graphic novel. Uh, he was he helped develop the. Um, Swamp Thing TV series. What are we else? He's done a few other bits and pieces. He's quite creative. And then producing the new Mortal Kombat. He's produced quite a bit of stuff, actually, quite a bit of stuff, uh, including the new Mortal Kombat. Yes. Um, yeah, he, he did Lights Out too. If I remember correctly. Yeah, he produced that. He produced it. Yeah, he's yeah. He's, he's produced a number of. Uh, if I switch over to, see, he's only got sixteen directorial credits, but he's got thirty-one producer credits. So, Saw 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Final Chapter, Animal, Demonic, Insidious 3, Conjuring 2, Lights Out, Annabelle Creation, Jigsaw, Insidious The Last Key, The Nun, The Curse of La Llorona, Annabelle Comes Home, Swamp Thing, MacGyver, MacGyver, Spiral, Conjuring the Devil Day Me Do It, he's, pro he's, he's producer on that, Mortal Kombat, There's Someone Inside Your House, Malignant, which is also directing, Dylan Dog, Aquaman 2, The Tommy Knockers, The Nun 2, The Crooked Man, and Aquaman King of Atlantis TV miniseries. Yeah, so I didn't he's... realize that, that that Aquaman's miniseries for HBO Max was going to be tied to the film. Yeah, set after. Yeah, animated miniseries looking to ride the wave of popularity for DC Comics. Yeah, I guess Crazy. it's sort of trying to DC trying to do the, uh, again, mimic uh, Marvel with these Disney Plus TV shows. Which yeah, is well, crazy. But then again, I mean. DC's always had really good series, but they're a standalone. Anyway, that's a sidetrack. I'm not falling for that. I'm not falling for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so... Uh, da -da 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 -da. 2019 was announced the two public products in development, a television adaptation of I Know What You Did Last Summer for Amazon Prime, and the horror movie Malignant, which is not going to be... Apparently, it's nothing to do with his comic book Malignant Man. Nah, it's an original film. Yeah, it's, yeah. Which I... Uh, it, was, it was in 2019, he was going to produce a television series based on the Italian horror comic series Dylan Dog. And in 2020 of March, it's been reported that he's working with Universal Pictures to produce a modern remake of Frankenstein. Now that could be interesting. That could be very interesting. would be very interesting to see. Yes. Um, a couple of, uh, lastly, I'm just, I'm just going through the Wikipedia. Unreleased projects. 2009. A one or wang collaborative project called X-Ray was announced and was described as a new film noir action project with producer Robbie Brenner also attached to the project. However, as of December 2012, no further developments were reported. Uh, looks like there was meant to be something following up from Death Sentence, a film called Nightfall. Nothing ever materialized there. 2012, yeah, Disney was reported was to be... Rock Rocketeer, yeah. Rocketeer, yeah. Uh, that never happened. 
Yeah, that uh, would have been cool. I would love to have seen him take on the Rocketeer. That would have been great. Fuck the Rocketeer. Oh my god, oh, Ethan! Sh- stop. <laughs> I honestly don't know what the fuck it is. You do, because Jennifer Connelly's in it. No, I honestly don't know what it is. Well, it's, uh, it's another old Disney one, but yeah, Jennifer oh, okay. Connelly. Jennifer Connelly's in it. Um, basically, it's like a, a stunt. Stunt. Is he stuntman? Or is he... I honestly haven't watched it. I can't, I can't remember. Basically, he finds like a um, a rocket that lets him fly. Oh. Yeah, and he becomes like a superhero. And he was also meant to uh, be attached at one point to direct a live-action Robotech film for Sony, but was replaced by Andy Machete in July 2017. Uh, He became engaged to German actress Ingrid Bissou on June 2019, and they married a short time later. So, there you go. I mean, uh, he wasn't born here, but he's one of us. He's an Australian, and he's done very well for himself. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of he, his accent's kind him. of a mission. Have you seen him like when he's behind the scenes? Like his accent's sort of half Australian, half American now. Nah, I haven't really seen him in any interviews or, or haven't really seen him talk. But yeah, I was watching some sort of behind the scenes conjuring stuff, and it was yeah, he's sort of. I guess he's been overworking in the US long enough that he's he, he could he's still his A's and his vowels still sound kind of Australian, but then there's other sort of sounds that come across as a bit American, so. Yeah, but he's doing very well for himself. I, I, I'm i keen to see him get back to horror simply because, you know, obviously that's where the man excels. Like, I didn't mind Aquaman. I didn't think it was... It was certainly a lot better than uh, a version of the character than what I saw in Justice League. Uh, Fast and Furious 7, I'm not a massive Fast and Furious fan, but it, I mean, it did all right, I guess. But really, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's his horror that... that really uh gets me excited so i'm keen to see and the thing is too i like the fact that he's constantly creating new ips you know what i mean that's probably what's more exciting rather than just churning out sequel after sequel after sequel like we said he's happy for someone else to do that uh you know he he's he's more interested in creating new stories yeah that's what i'm saying as well like kind of with his creativity like he he's such a super creative dude that he can step away from something because he's already got something else in the pipeline he's got an idea about he's, he he seems like a guy that's consistently working on something new huh this is interesting i just went to the imd page for malignant which he's directing uh the story is written by his wife ingrid Bassoon. really i didn't know that yeah oh huh. yeah i know she's in it though she's i know she's in the film uh stars annabelle wallace maddie hassan george young lots of names i don't know uh, Annabelle Wallace was the main, was the main, Annabelle was the mum in Annabelle. One. And the first Annabelle. First one. Yeah. Uh, and Jake, yes. Ad- Jake Abel was um, in Supernatural. He was Adam. Right. For those I, that don't, know I, who that yeah, is. I never watched Supernatural. He's the, he's the third Winchester. If you say so. Yes, I do say so. Yeah, so we're just going to wait for that because I'm assuming that's going to be horror. I'm assuming that's horror. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's so. horror. They, it's past as horror, yeah. They right, haven't yeah. really said anything about what it's going to be about, have they? Nah. But it's, it's apparently it's don't see it as horror. Yeah. But it's been removed from the release schedule this year because of coronavirus. Yeah. But yeah, very talented individual. And, um, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to the next whatever it is 20 30 years of his directorial work uh he's done some amazing stuff uh and you know i imagine in 20 years time he will be up there with the wes cravens and the clive barkers and the you know the george ramiro's and the all that sort of stuff you know he'll be he'll be one of those iconic uh horror directors that we uh that we look to for inspiration yeah he's definitely going to be one of those guys that is going to be remembered for the next long while yeah, yeah, and we get to put an Australian flag in his hand. All the better, right? Yeah, I guess. All right, so, Ethan, uh, what's on at the movies next Friday night? Ha! Ha! Um, uh, nothing. Black screen, nothing. What do we got coming to streaming services, though? I mean, we, we've got, obviously, we got uh, Extraction on Netflix this Friday. What else is happening, do you yeah, know? Extraction. Uh, I know tonight, for those that are interested, uh, the first episode of the Michael Jordan 10 part series is, is dropped on Netflix so after I finish this that's what I'm going to go watch the half of it is out May 1st 
the Willoughby's is out this Wednesday. It's a new Netflix original animated film. Afterlife season two is out Friday. Oh, good. That's about all for Netflix by the look of it. Okay. What about Amazon? Yeah. Anything coming to Amazon? Oh, I don't know about Amazon. God. I don't even know how to look for the what's coming soon shit. You're the worst. Uh, I'm just having I'm just having a quick look now. Well, there's a new series in there called Tales from the Loop, which is a sci-fi series. It's apparently quite good. Yes, yeah, we, we looked at the trailer uh, a little while back. Yeah, I just skipped it because I only just found out about it on the weekend. We talked about it on the podcast. Yeah, you don't pay me. Yeah. You don't pay me any attention, do you? I don't pay a lot of people any attention, do you? Don't take it personal. Okay, man. Oh, I don't know if this is Australia or not, but apparently the lighthouse is coming to Amazon Prime. Good, good. Yeah, I mean, it, it said uh, what was the episode that we, was it last episode we had Jesse? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, and we were yeah. lamenting because it had just hit Australian cinemas, and then you know, three days later the cinema got closed. Yeah, they had to pull it. Oh, damn. I would have yeah. loved to have seen it on the big screen, hey? Yeah, that would be yeah. cool. It's I, definitely I still due, haven't watched it yet. It's due for another watch. It's due for another watch yeah. already. Such a good I haven't film. watched it yet, but that's, that's on the list for sure. It looks amazing. Bump it up the list. <laughs> but if that comes out, that'd be amazing on Amazon, because then everyone gets to enjoy it, because... Uh, you know, they've probably heard a lot about it, and they just haven't had a, a, an opportunity to watch it. So, if it does come out, that's definitely when you've got to catch. Just, yeah. So good. So good. Alright, well, I guess that's pretty much everything for this episode of the podcast. Hopefully people are staying indoors, yeah. staying safe, staying clean. Lots of uh, TV to binge watch. Catch up on all those TV shows and video games that you haven't been playing because you haven't had the time. We've still got a, a, probably at least a month or two of this this grind to get through. But, uh, oh well, that's the way it is. We'll be back next episode with some more news, some more trailers, and a new topic of conversation. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Huge thank you to our Patreon supporters who help make this podcast possible every episode. I was going to say month then, or fortnight. It's neither anymore. Just as we see fit. We're just so carte blanche with it all. <laughs> Whatever we have enough to talk about. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's just a case of when we've got enough news. But we'll be back in the next episode, and hopefully you'll be there with us. Until then, take care. Catch you next time. Lucas. Sound of silence. He left me hanging. Yeah, fucking, what a dick.